Hey, how's it going? This is Scott Batch, and in today's episode, we're gonna cover, it's titled, I'm Scared. A lot of people, that when they first come to me and, they're, and they wanna take lessons, they say they're intimidated, or before they even get near the beach, they call me up or they text me, write me and say, hey, I'm really afraid of the water, and I wanna learn how to surf, what do I gotta do? So, in this episode, uh, I'll be talking about while I would do it if I was telling myself when I was 16 years old what to do if I was intimidated by the water. Um, at the time I wasn't, but I, we all need to have a, a healthy respect for the ocean. All right, like I was saying, today's episode is going to be on the topic of uh, being afraid of the water. And so I'll, I'll have a, the first thing I'll talk about is things I would do if I was afraid of the water that have nothing to do with a surfboard. Then I'll talk about what I would do if I was afraid of the water with a surfboard. And then I have a story about a friend of mine who came to our lessons and said that she was uh, terrified of the ocean, but she still wanted to learn how to surf. So these episodes, the first 50 episodes, are are designed around uh, the, th the thoughts that I've had in the past and or the uh, things that people have said to me in the past, such as, I want to start learn how to surf, but I'm scared. I've heard that quite often. And so since I've heard it so much, I thought I should probably make a episode about that right in the beginning. And looking back when I was 16 years old, if I was afraid of the water, the thing that I would tell myself to do with the knowledge I have now is to go hang out in shallow water at a, at a nice crowded beach that has a lot of lifeguards. And I'd only go hang out on a day like today there's no wind, no rain, and pretty small waves. And I would just hang out and play around in waist deep water. I wouldn't go any further than my waist. The reason being is because there's a lot of undercurrents when you go to the beach. And if you go much deeper than your waist, it gets really difficult to have the control um, because of flotation, the water is trying to push you up and it means that there's less pressure on your feet on the surface. And um, so with there being less pressure on your feet, it means that you have less control of where you're going and they, while the currents are pushing against you and the waves are pushing against you. So I would hang out in the in the uh, swimmer area um, and I would practice going underwater repeatedly and coming up out of the water without holding my nose and without wiping the um, water out of my eyes. Because when you surf, you can't hold your nose when you go underwater, which you're gonna go underwater a lot eventually. And you can't wipe the water out of your eyes because you lose control of your board. And it also slows down your momentum of getting to out to where the waves are. So I would hang out and I would just swim in that area over and over for days and days and days until I was really comfortable in that in that uh, waist deep area. Then I'd probably tell myself to get a boogie board and go and watch other people catch waves and just kind of do what they do in waist deep water and just keep on getting used to that. And then once I get used to being on a boogie board in waist deep water, then the next evolution would be to get some, some boogie board fins and I would uh, hang out in waist deep water and learn how to catch waves using my fins. Cause it's much more effective when you're using your fins on a boogie board than it is to paddle. It just doesn't work very good. So I'd get the fins 
and I'd learn how to just catch waves. I'd watch other people uh, catching waves and then I would spend my time doing that. That feeling of being on the wave is going to be needed later on when we are trying to figure out when is the best time to stand up on after we um, while we're surfing in once again waist deep water so this waist deep water theme theme comes in quite a quite a bit in order to help a person uh, feel really comfortable in the water and while they're learning to have respect for the water and finding out what their limitations are eventually you'll find out and go out a little bit further a little bit further a little bit further and pretty soon i'm like chest deep in the water doing the uh, boogie boarding and as an added bonus that boogie boarder that sorry the boogie board can act as a uh, uh, a life ring for me so i don't ever want to let go of it, it has a little leash that goes a little cord that goes from your wrist to the board i don't ever want to let that thing go because i know that if i got into trouble i could use my boogie board as a life ring and so that leads me to my sep second topic is what would i do next if my 16 year old self was uh was scared and or afraid of the water then after i i would tell my uh 16 year old self with the knowledge i have now that i could get it go and rent a uh 10 foot long foam board and that's because i weighed 200 right now 240 I'm trying to lose 30 pounds while i do this paddle boarding for uh for summer not not for looks but for uh health reasons i just want to get down down to 210. my body loves to be at like 227. that is just like a number it has such a tough time i would so i'd get a uh a 10 foot board and even for even for people that weigh half my weight um if i was half that weight if i was like if i was 130 pounds 120 pounds i'd still recommend a nine foot foam board because they offer so much stability but i tell myself hey get a 10 foot board go to that same beach because usually usually crowded beaches are the best beaches to learn how to surf that's generally true not always but generally and because usually the best waves are found at uh, reef breaks and usually reef breaks have a lot less people hanging out on the beach so i would tell myself go go back to this or I'd let, let me back up. I would tell myself, Google, do a Google search and find out best beginner beaches in case I was at the wrong beach and didn't know it. Cause you could be at a really good beach for surfers and it could be a intermediate um, level wave and you wouldn't even know it. So I could Google search uh, best beginner beginner waves and once I found out that I'm at the right wave at the right beach then I'd go in and once again hang out in waist deep water and I could even wear that that like ski uh, water skiing type flotation vest if I just wasn't really sure of my abilities once again by staying in that waist deep water i could just learn how to just moving with my with my surfboard a 10 foot surfboard is difficult enough 
the last thing I need to do is try to learn how to move it when I'm in deeper water because in the in the deeper water that's usually where uh, surfers are trying to catch the actual waves and I don't want to get in their way because I barely know how to I wouldn't even know at first how to control my own board so at first I would tell myself do not go out to where the actual waves are but hang out where the whitewash is because I'll be catching whitewash all day and that's it for weeks if not months if I need to um because it's going to take a while especially if I'm afraid of the water and I don't know how to swim yeah it's going to take many months because I also have to work on my swim technique so I would also tell myself hey start taking some swim lessons while I'm at it so there's a lot of stuff going on right which reminds me about our friend that came to me and said that she was scared. One time a, a, a woman signed up for our surf lessons. She found us on meetup.com, M-E-E-T-U-P.com. And she signed up for our lessons. And I'm not sure if she contacted me first or if she told me at the beach. But either way, because it happens both ways a lot people tell me that they're scared but she let me know that she was terrified of the water and I told her that with a lot of help I could help her out with that when she showed up um, I think she showed up for an actual surf lesson and she barely wanted to go even go in the water to her knees she was terrified of the water so I gave the I gave uh, the lesson instruction to all the other surfers and then told her to leave her board on shore so we just go out and stand in the water in knee deep water and I could talk to her while we we're standing there watching the other surfers. While we we're out there we could focus on on what the other surfers were doing instead of her being afraid of the water. And I think that by watching other people, it really took her mind off of her being scared. And eventually she saw that people were only going out to their waist. We weren't telling them to go out in a deep water. They would turn around, lay down on their board, and catch a wave in. And sometimes it wasn't even waist deep water. Sometimes the waves, um, are on some days the, the water is barely even knee deep and you can be way you can be pretty far out and catch a wave uh, quite a ways with it only being knee deep water it's pretty crazy how that happens sometimes usually on medium tide days and so she was uh so eventually she she uh got comfortable enough to go out and walk aboard out to the uh, waist deep water and she would practice this she would show up every weekend I don't remember if she would surf on her own but she would show up every weekend and back then I was doing the, the lessons pretty regularly so she would show up quite often and she got used to it, but she was still pretty timid in the waves. And I told her, I want to teach you to have fun getting hit by the waves instead of it all always being scary. And there's a thing that people do called body whomping. And that's when you go to a place that has a really big shore pound. And you just like launch your body into the shore pound. This wave is like crashing onto the shore. And you launch your body into it and then the, the wave just throws you and it brings you back up on shore. So much fun. But if somebody else was terrified of the water, they would think that that looks like a car crash or, you know, or a train crash. And so at first she's like, there's no possible way. And I was like, I trust me, you just go in with me. 
And so the two of us, I tried, we, we took her into a smaller wave and basically we timed it right so that right when this wave broke, we just jumped right on top of it. I said, instead of staying really tight, uh, just let your, you let your body ragdoll and let the wave just take you. And so we got into bigger and bigger and bigger waves. And then some of the waves we could, we could dive under real quick. And when she dove under some waves, she realized that if I dive under the waves, I don't even feel a lot of times that much turbulence if it's the right timing. Sometimes there's nothing you can do. You're just gonna get, you're just gonna get body whomped anyways. But on some of the waves, you could tell, hey, if I jump under the wave at the right time, like when, they're, like when it's curling and I jump like this, um, then I could, then I could avoid a lot of the turbulence. So once she saw that, oh, that, that was kind of something clicked in her mind. And now she was ready for, for some, uh, for going the next step with her, with her surfing. So we went back after that, she was completely changed. And then she started, um, paddling like out to where the, the waves were, where the surfers were on small days and we'd show her where to go, what to do. That'd be like the next level of our lessons. Where to go, how to stay away from people, how to control our board. You know, things, whoa. Little side wave. So those little sideways are good for my uh, core because, um, like I said, I'm trying to get ready for paddleboard surfing this summer. That's why. So that's why I'm out here, and I figured since I'm, I'm out here, I might as well be doing lessons, or no, not lessons, but you know these first 50 episodes. So, anyway, so. One day, she, uh, I was standing in probably like waist deep water and it was so funny because I was, I was talking to somebody else about um, surf lessons and then this woman comes by and she's swimming around us like a guppy or a little fish in the water and she was like, now instead of being terrified, she was like a little fish in the ocean, like she belonged there. And she would surf for six, seven, eight hours. It was pretty awesome to watch the evolution of her going from not being able to stand in knee deep water to uh, switching to being able to stay out for six or seven hours. All right, this is where I'm gonna turn Turn around, head back. And this is where I turn around and head back. Guys, that was a workout for my core, just turning around. So I'm gonna head back and I should keep my struggles. <laughs> I should keep my struggle on the uh, episodes. So you can see what I'm going through. But you'll also see how I'll change and get stronger over the next 56 days of uh, paddling, but my, I'm gonna go in here and start the uh, start filming the next episode, which is called "I Want to Surf, But I Have Some Disabilities." All right. So, if you have any questions, please put them in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe and like. I'm also trying to figure out the best way to, to uh, make these videos. Oh, one day, 
these videos are just to help me learn how to how to post videos on YouTube. One day I hope to do a much more professional version of these same videos. So there's not so many ums. I don't say the word so as much. You know, just a lot more professional. So that's my goal. Get 50 of these out, learn how to do things, answer some questions, get stronger on my paddle board, lose a bunch of weight, and uh, help people in their own adventure. All right? So come check out the next episode. But I want to learn how to surf, but I have some disabilities. All right. Bye.